Hi folks, well my previous attempt to tear down this uh, three doodler thing didn't get very far. Um, I managed to work out that the rubber bit kind of came out there but then the buttons were stuck in there but tonight I've just discovered this little panel on the side seems to be quite forgiving to come off so I thought we'd see if there was a screw or anything like that there. See we're still... Aha. Uh -huh getting us out we seem to have found a, a way to go there there we go oh, now we can have a look inside this thing now this thing seems to have a fan of some description on it certainly when you're using it it feels like it's blowing hot air out of the front but two fairly heavy duty wires going onto this board which say heat and heat, so that's the power supply to the heating element which is just tacked on at the end there and that bit, that channel there clearly the path the filament follows before it gets pushed down and into the nozzle by uh, this little clip here um, this bit here seems to be made of metal which is part of this whole head assembly, this barrel is part of it um, so looks like it was probably CNC machined out of something. So if I remove that screw, this barrel section will come forward. If I remove that, we might open up the whole thing. There we go, we're in. Okay, so I was right, there is a little fan in here. Tiny little fan with what looks like a, uh, it's kind of a larger version of a cell phone vibration motor there. Ah, I didn't notice that before, so that's a four wire connector there. So this is the whole extruder screw mechanism. And if I turn that motor, we will get a tiny amount of uh, movement on the screw there. It's quite nice they've done an all metal gearbox there. That'll uh, improve the lifespan a bit. I guess they uh, might have had problems in the past. But I mean, I, I kind of actually like this from the, um, the way they managed to cram everything into such a small space there. That's uh, really quite cool. That's the potentiometer we can adjust through the case with our little screwdriver. That'll be the thing that looked like a power connector on the outside they've got some um, I think they call it the jet battery pack that goes with it but that's just to supply a power in as an alternative to that there's our little switch for selecting multiple positions so if anywhere we're getting a temperature sensor signal coming in it's got to be over there okay so this is just a uh, camcorder pointed through desktop magnifier but hopefully I've managed to get this in focus um, looks reasonable so this is our heater element and we've got one of the contacts is the metal strapping that goes along the side and then these wires they've actually labeled it for us so we've got heat heat and NTC NTC is our thermistor negative temperature coefficient so if we follow the track from that we can see we skip under that micro switch up to that rightmost pin there which will be the rightmost track on this circuit on this uh, flat flex and then that flat flex is coming back over to this circuit board feeding somehow or other through all of that knot and we've got our adjustment pot there so I might just try plugging in a multimeter into this plugging this in with the multimeter attached and see what kind of reading we're getting on there um, I might be able to find some way to swap a component or maybe swap a resistor down here so I can get a bit more heat out of this thing and maybe actually get it working properly. Just a bit of a better look at the top side of this circuit board I've freed it up from its plastic housing so we really haven't got much to see on the top side just the uh, on low high switch a couple of little capacitors not sure what they're for our potentiometer for adjusting the set point on the thing external power input this is where the flat flex plugs in and this is the actual power input there and then on the bottom side we've actually got the brains of the operation 
Um, can I read that from the screen? I'm going to have to look at these with a microscope to find out what they actually are. But a couple of chips for the brains of the operation. I imagine one of those is little more than a FET driver to turn the power to the heater on and off because that's got to be pulling an amp of current or somewhere round about there. And uh, a bunch of discrete stuff scattered around there. OK, so just getting this board under the microscope. This is our actual main processor here, the Nuvoton N79E8312AS16. This is an 8051 based microcontroller running at 24 megahertz. It's got a whopping 2K of PROM on it. Um, I think it's a one-time programmable device um, or, or flash prommed in the factory. Um, and 512 bytes of RAM. Amazing, awesome processing power there. Um, but then it is just running a motor. This 9110S chip here is an H-bridge driver. So this one's actually going to be controlling the feed motor sending it backwards and forwards so that's what you use a h-bridge for it can drive motors in either direction and then down at this end of the circuit board these sc s2 cab things are going to be some form of fet i'm guessing that's just turning the current on and off to the heating element at the end and also to the fan because uh, those things only need tent to go in one direction and everything else on the top side of that board is either a resistor or a capacitor oh and we've got our multicolour LED there that can do red, green and blue. Um, I'm guessing it's a full RGB LED, but uh, they're not blending the colours on it at all. OK, so here's what I'm thinking. There's a little NTC negative temperature coefficient thermistor built inside this tip somewhere. And um, I've got it heated up at the moment, so the light's gone blue. If I just unplug this, I've tagged some wires on so I can check the resistance of this. So when this tip is hot, you can see we're getting, well, we were getting about 850, 900 ohms or so of resistance at the hot temperature. And as this tip cools down, this resistance here goes up. And um, on the basis that we're about 900 ohms when we're hot or 850 when we're actually at our ideal temperature, and one, one kilo ohm by the time we cool down to room temperature, what I'm thinking is if I just add in here an extra... 100 ohms or so of resistance, is that going to be enough to fool this thing into thinking that it's uh, not hot enough? Or, you know, some other value of resistance, an extra 50 ohms or so. Um, so I'm going to try that and then uh, measure what tip temperature I get with an extra resistor in line there. So I don't know if this will show up on the camera. Um, it's probably poorly illuminated. But um, I've stuck an extra, a mere 22 ohms of resistance in there in line with, in series with the NTC. And um, I've got myself sort of a 5 degree temperature increase. It was reading 230, but um, I'm getting poor contact there. But um, that's quite encouraging. So maybe I'll increase that to a bit more than the two, 22 ohms it is at the moment. See if I can find something closer to 50 ohms. So now we've got a 47 ohm resistor in. And we're holding steady at 236, which seems to be, to me, right in the sweet spot of, P, of ABS's temperatures of uh, 220 to 260. We're round about 240 there. So I'm going to stick with the 47 ohm and see if I can work out some way to squeeze an extra component into the already very tight shell on this thing without getting in the way of the uh, rubbery buttons as well. So whatever I do is going to have to live underneath those buttons to uh, see what I can do. So such as it is, here's my uh, fix. So I've just got the wire from the thermistor going up to this end of the resistor and I've tagged this one on the circuit board and I'm hoping that that's going to fit okay inside the top of this rubber shroud here. Well we're back together again and it uh, Looks basically the same, there's a tiny bulge there in the rubber where that resistor's sitting, but other than that, we all fit. And uh, the real question is, have I broken it? Well, so far so good. It won't actually feed until it's warmed up. So this is a rod of the ABS. I'll just wait for the light to go blue. Which is gonna take a bit longer now because it's got to heat up hotter. Assuming all my connections are okay. Yeah, cool. 
we think we've reached the right temperature so hopefully this is actually about 235 degrees now oh and i've made the rookie mistake yeah, let's just press that Okay, well, we're only, uh, we're better than we were. Could probably have done with another 10 degrees C on that tip there. So possibly somewhere around a 68 ohm instead of a 47 ohm would have uh, made this fix better. But it's a real pain getting this back together again. I just had to slide the rubber bit in. Um, it's been suggested that perhaps the power brick that comes with it isn't supplying quite enough oomph for it. So I've hacked an old power supply from a Bluetooth headset just to get this connector. And um, I'm running it off my bench supply and I've upped the voltage ever so slightly to 5.2 because I know that uh, the electronics inside this are good to 5.5 volts. And uh, we're just topping out at 1.2 amps, which is exactly what the power brick supplies. So. Um, I don't think there's a problem with the power brick at all and certainly uh, having 3.2 amps of current available hasn't helped this thing maintain temperature at all. Um, it's still just as bad as it ever was and uh, we'll take things absolutely to the limit and try 5.5 volts. Just not good enough. I was going to write thanks Reichelt because thank you Reichelt for sending me this but uh, unfortunately even with my modifications we're still not quite up to the job. You know? We're kind of uh, oozing a little bit there. Um, yeah I just don't think the 5 watt heater's enough for it. It's basically got it on the full time there trying to maintain the temperature. Um, it just doesn't have quite enough power to keep things going. Um, it's a great shame, but uh, oh well, it's a little bit better. It can write thanks now. And um, well, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>